are 16 big ones. These are the big 16 that I've, I've found that if you're going to be a success, you know, in real estate or really anything, these 16 things have to be addressed somehow mentally by you. All right. Now, first of all, let's, let's back up and make some foundation with that statement. Okay. Because we live in a world where you are allowed to blame anyone and everyone or anything for your life or your lack thereof. You are allowed to do that. Every therapist, every psychologist will, oh yes, yes, it was your dad, it was your mom, it was your brother, it was your last business partner, it was this, it was that. If you are going to be successful, you have to first of all realize that this all revolves around you. Everything. You are ultimately responsible. When you, the Lord willing, live to be an old person and are breathing your final breaths, it will be you who are who has lived your life and made all of your decisions and now at the end it is what it is if it is to be it is up to me someone famous once said if it is to be it is up to me 100% responsibility you must take for everything in your life. That means you can no longer blame the lead machine. You can no longer blame the coach. You can no longer blame the spouse. You can no longer blame your job as a distraction. You can no longer blame any the fact that you lack resources. You can no longer blame anything. The only thing you can blame is you, okay? Now, once you've blamed yourself correctly, you are in a great position to wash your hands of that blame and begin starting a new trek, all right? And on that trek, I'm going to submit to you that you are going to have to, number one, you can write this down. This is one of the 16, number one. You're going to have to develop a winning attitude. You're going to have to develop a winning attitude. Well, Justin, I thought that's what we were here to do. Yeah, that's what we are here doing, but I, I can't do it for you really in an hour. But what I can do is I can give you a hard shove in the right direction. And how you will begin doing this, developing a winning attitude, is I want you to become a listener first and foremost of your own self-talk. Do you hear the voice in your head? Do you hear what you say about yourself when things happen? Are you a chronic down on yourself person? What I mean is this, anytime something comes up that looks like a challenge, do you literally think and then speak out of your mouth words like this? Oh, well, I'm no good at this. Oh, well, I, I don't know if I can do this. Well, I'm not sure if, if I, if I touch this, it'll break. Okay. You are literally cursing yourself. You have to stop this and develop a winning attitude. We love all of our athletic heroes and all of them have what? A winning attitude. You cannot go far in life or business without developing a winning attitude. Okay. Let's talk about number two. Display your why. Display your why. 
But let me let me back up from here and, and then stop just for one moment and say, what is it that made you get into real estate in the first place? Write that down for me. You got a piece of paper and a pen. Write it down for me right now. What made you get into real estate in the first place? I can tell you what it was for me. It was an infomercial late at night. And then it was my brother. Actually, I saw him doing some of it. And it really, really, really then it made it real for me. Okay, so those two things, the infomercial and then my brother, that's what got me into it. But but that's not why, that's what. But once I think of what got me into it, now I can remember why I got into it. Let's talk about why for one for a few minutes. Display your why. Now, you got to write it down to display it, okay? So I want you to begin writing it down. I want you this is part of your homework tonight. You got to write down your why. You got to write it down and then you got to start a vision board. Okay? I want you to take a picture of the car, the home, the whatever it is, whatever your why is and start displaying it. Okay. How about this? How do you display the ability to work from home or anywhere? Because that's probably one of the things that brought you here today. Your journey has led you to this point because you have a desire to have the ability to work from home or from anywhere and make a considerable living. That's my guess. Okay. I could be wrong, but is that part of your why? I want you to write that down. Is it the ability to work from home or anywhere? And then put it on a vision board. Start to display it. Okay. You've got to start working on this project this evening. All right. Now, now, what about this? The option of working when you want to. Is that part of the why? If you're me, it is. Because I don't like taking orders. I have authority problems. I'm the worst employee that ever worked at any job. The boss tries to tell me what to do and it makes me mad. So it's important for me that I be able to work when I want to <laughs> and from home or wherever I want to. How do I display that on a vision board? Do you remember why you got into real estate? That's what we're talking about. Why did you get into real estate in the first place? Was it because you wanted to work from home or anywhere? Well, are you displaying that vision anywhere or is it just a la 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 thought you used to have and you don't remember anymore? The option of working when you choose to. How about how about real job security? Anybody ever been fired? I've been fired a lot for the reasons that I just expressed. And for other reasons, job security, you think you got job security because you work for Google or because you work for a software company or this or that, or, you know, whatever job, you know what I, here's, here's the vulgar way that I used to say this and I'll say it. And maybe this will be the last time I'll say it this vulgar, but there over here in, in Kansas city where I live on independence Avenue, there's street walkers. They have more job security than almost any job out there. Now, 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 that sounds absolutely absurd and vulgar and nasty. And yeah, it is. And hopefully it'll stick in your mind that your job, mean, it means nothing for security. So that's why I got into real estate because the first job I had, they went out of business and then I was laid off. And then I was a part of some other businesses and other jobs where the same kind of things happened and I lost my job there at no fault of my own. Job security, that was, that's one of my whys. How do you display that on a vision board? I don't know, that's your job tonight. That's your task. If that's important to you, it needs to be on your vision board. How about this? A higher earning potential. Every job I had kept me off at some earning, er, er, you know, top earnings. Like I'm going to get $12 an hour tops, you know, $7 an hour. You know, when I started, I started working at $4.25 an hour 
That was the that was the minimum wage. And I learned real quick that it's hard to pay the bills at four and a quarter. Well, I, I'm here to submit to you that it's hard to pay the bills on anybody else's dream when you're working for their dream. So that's what got me into real estate was because I wanted to be able to actually make real money. Is that what got you into real estate? Is, is that why you're here? I, I'm guessing probably. How do you display that on a vision board? Okay, higher earning potential than a job. How do we put that on a vision board? It's important for us. What about, what about this passive income? Cause I don't want to have to get up and go to work every day of my life. Is that why you got into real estate? See, that's why I got into real estate was for passive income. I wanted, I want, I wanted to be able to wake up and figure out, hey, listen, my bills are already paid this month, so I ain't got to worry because I was a worrier. Worried about the bills, worried about the, the utilities, worried about the gas in the car, worried about the insurance, worried about the food, worried about everything. Worry, worry, worry. I was so sick and tired of it. And when you're self-sabotaging, this happens. You, you worry a lot about the money. How do you display your why? How do you display your passive income goals that will get you away from those worries? How do you display that on a vision board? All right, that's your job tonight. Your job is to create a vision board that has your whys on it. And here, these are just a few of the big whys Family time. That was part of one, you know, number one, the ability to work from home or work anywhere. And two, the option of working when you want to. Family time. Is that is that what it means to you? Does it mean family time to you? Does it mean fun time? Does it mean the ability to have freedom to do your church stuff? W whatever, you know, go, do you want to go hand gliding? Do you want to go, you know, wh what is it? I don't know for you, I know for me, but if you're not displaying it, then that's your job tonight. Begin to dis write this stuff down. If you don't write it down or display it, then it remains an intangible thought. If you want to bring it into some sense of reality, the first step is to write it down or display it. Now, what I do when I display it is I do what I just wrote here, and you guys can see it. Pray it, see it, and say it. That's what I do. Pray it, see it, and say it. But but you're not. If you're not displaying that, you're not. You're not praying it probably or seeing it or saying it all at all. It's just a thought. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of good thoughts out there. And some of them, yours are very good and you need to write them down. And then don't judge them so harshly anymore. Just write them down. And then you can start translating that into what that means in your life okay how do i represent on a vision board what it means to have real job security to have the option of working when i want to to have the ability to work from home or where i want to to have a higher a high earning potential what does it mean what does it look like on my vision board let's open up the let's open up the mics and somebody give me some ideas what do you think should go on your vision board that represents some of these? Let's spur some ideas. Let's brainstorm here a little bit. Let's not let's not judge any ideas. Let's just let's just hear ideas. Anybody got any ideas? How do we display those concepts on a vision board? No, nobody has any ideas. Why are you guys so quiet today? Is it Monday morning? You got the Monday morning blues. 
Okay, how do you display those concepts on a vision board is your homework tonight, all right? And you don't have to have it completely done tonight, but I want you to begin the process of writing these things down. This is part of a mindset reset. You're not going to really reset your mind unless we go back to why you are here in the first place. Why are you here? Let's write it down. Let's display it because this is your tackling fuel. You remember that? <laughs> this is your tackling fuel <laughs> from Waterboy the movie. All right. You need tackling fuel. All right. So that's your job tonight is to start developing some tackling fuel. All right. Here's the next step. I'm sorry. That was a long one. Number one characteristic of successful people that I've noticed here is that they develop a winning attitude. Number two is they display their why. They keep it in front of them. They are on a mission. All right. If, if you're not on a mission, get on one. All right. Number three, productivity every day over everything. Productivity every day over everything. All right? You have to start training your mind to think in terms of productivity and non-productivity. Okay? Because you will be compensated in life in direct proportion to your productivity. What are you producing? That is the root word, to produce. What are you producing by your actions, your activities? If your activities are not producing, then you need to modify the activity. That's, that's logic, right? That's logic. So you've got to be able to switch your thinking into a productivity judgment zone. I'm judging every day my own productivity. All right, please hear me that that's what a boss does. All right, that's what a boss does. A boss judges your productivity at work. If you don't want to have a boss, then you have to begin judging your own productivity. All right, you have to judge your own productivity. Productivity every day over everything. All right, number four. You must adopt a do it now style. Adopt a do it now style. If you were to take a little time and go interview my former employers, they would tell you that the most unique thing about Justin is you can't mention around him that we should call someone because he will be dialing the phone right then. Why wait? Adopt a do it now style. This is a style, okay? This is not a this is not a major major uh, personality change. This is just you adopting a new style about yourself. I'm a do it now kind of person. When I know something needs to be done, I do it when. I do it now. Okay. This really hit home for me a few times in life when I had a manager crawl up my backside. And he said some things that hurt my feelings. And I don't and and I'm and I'm not like I don't need revenge on that. I'm thankful for that. <laughs> now, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but here's the facts. And it's true because it's true for all of us. You know, we all just define self-sabotage as when you know, but you don't do. When that little voice in your head says, call that lead. You need to work those leads today. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to take out the trash. Uh, 
the dogs need to go for a walk real bad. You got to do that. You need to adopt a do it now style. A do it now style. If you don't do it now, write it down at least. Okay. These are just tips I've noticed from people that are successful in my club and, and, and things I've adopted in time. The, so adopt a do it now style. If you're not going to do it now, at least write it down now. Okay. What this will do is, is this will create in you a spirit of excellence. It will. And that will take you far. The do it now style. I was watching a movie. I think it was GI Jane. You guys know <laughs> GI Jane and they were carrying they're out these Navy seals are like in the hell week or whatever. And they're, they're carrying the, the, the raft, you know, uh, the group of fellas and they're being told to yell, do it right. The first time, every time do it right. We do it right. The first time, every time we do it right. The first time, every time. Yeah. And that's why they're badass and, and we're not. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. That's why they're the Navy SEALs and we're the fat SEALs. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's me. I'm the couch. I'm the couch SEAL. They're the Navy SEAL because they do it right the first time, every time. And I kind of do it whenever I feel like it kind of half ass. Oh, oh. Yeah. Adopt a do it now style. Okay, here's the next one. Start talking to leads right away. These are 16 things that I've noticed successful students in real estate do. They start talking to leads right away, even before they feel ready. That's pretty easy. We don't need to talk about that too much. But why is that so doggone hard? I don't know why. Talking to leads is so hard. You know, it's because we haven't, we haven't really sold ourselves, I think. And that, that goes with the, the developing a winning mindset and, and having a, your why displayed and all of that. But, but Colin, start talking immediately, you know. All right, here's the next one. This is uh, number six. You got to commit to gaining expert level knowledge on your topic. Okay, if you're going to do lease options, then stop being a stop being a sub two guy for five minutes until you can learn lease options really, really good. And now you got two things. Okay, don't don't just get a, a, a halfway measure of the knowledge. If you want to be a professional in this then you must commit to gaining expert level knowledge. If you guys go look at my, look at my video testimonials, you'll see, you'll see LaShonda. LaShonda is the most popular student that I ever had. And LaShonda, she in fact, started with lease options with me and then decided that the same system was easily used to do land deals. So she started flipping land deals and she was flipping a lot of them. But if you watch the videos of her testimonials, you can see that what she did was is she committed to gaining an expert level knowledge on flipping land. I have a lot of guys and gals in my coaching club and learning is hard. Learning is hard. Okay. That's what they tell themselves. That's what they've been telling themselves for years. Learning is hard. If you can't get past that and commit to gaining an expert level knowledge in your field of study, then you will always be mediocre at best. Okay. That is just facts. All right. 
Use the next one. This is number seven. Use social media to your advantage. I don't think we have to talk a lot about that, but, you know, there's two ways to use social media. One embarrasses you and the other promotes you. Okay, if you watch what I do, I ride a fine line between those two, and sometimes I bounce like a, a like a ping pong ball back and forth. <laughs> so I should improve, but <clears throat> at least I re recognize. Excuse me. At least I recognize that social media is a big, big deal. Okay, you better use it to your advantage, and if you're older. And you're thinking, eh, I don't want to get involved in that. I got a friend. His name is Fred. Fred's dead. Now, and I don't know if there's any correlation between Fred being dead, but Fred shouldn't be dead. He's too young to be dead. He was only in his 60s. Fred's dead. And Fred always said, I'll never get a cell phone, ever. I'm never going to do it. Now Fred's dead. I don't know if there's a relationship there. I'm just saying it seems like Fred died a long time ago because he quit growing. Sometimes getting on social media and putting up with the hassle of learning new things is just what life requires. And let me say this while we are here. Nothing for you will ever be over. And I want you to hear me because I'm going to set you free from that prison that your mind is in when it comes to, I will one day be successful and then I'll have no, none of these problems. That's just not true. That's not true. Okay. That's a prison that, that, that society puts our minds in. But here's the facts. You're going to work until you're dead. So just get okay with it. And you might say, well, but you just said that we're going to get into this business because we want to be the ability to work from home. Yeah. Work from home or anywhere. Yeah. What about the option of working when you choose to? Yeah. You work when you choose to. Yeah, that's right. What about uh, real job security? Yeah, you own your own work, right? Uh huh. What about higher earning potential? Yeah, when you work. What about building passive income? Yeah, that's also work. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. You'll always work. It may be to get the money, but after you get the money, you'll have to work to keep the money. You'll always have some work to do. So if you are trying to reach point break where I am completely free and I will never have another worry or concern or work I have to do ever again, that is not in your purview. You will not, you will not attain that. Not on this realm. Not on this realm, not unless you somehow marry an elite or maybe if you win the Powerball. Okay. But just resign in your mind that there is always going to be a new work for you when this one is completed. I'm, I'm sorry, that is just reality. And, and you can, you can look at my life as proof. Yeah. I mean, I'm doing well and I work all the time. I want to, I need to. Okay. There's other people, everybody that you see doing well, oh, they working. They're doing something. And remember, this goes back to productivity. It doesn't ever end. You'll be, you'll be doing that till you're dead. And that's just the way this realm works. 
Now, if you can adjust your spirit so that you know that this is the way that life is, and then you can create a work, and this is the, ne this is the next one. And this segues into it. If you can set up a work schedule that enhances your life rather than takes away from it and follow it, then that's the way to go. Okay. Now, I know I just took y'all down in the valley, but I'm trying to bring you back up the mountain again. Okay. Because here we are. If we got to work, then I want you to set up a work schedule that enhances your life and follow it. That should be a goal. If it's not something that you can accomplish today, it should be an immediate goal. Goal number one for me to set up a work schedule that enhances my life and follow it, unless you want to be a slave. And then you can just work whenever they say. Okay. All right. I love you guys. I'm not trying to be mean or boring. Now, here we go. Here's the next one. Number nine, buy a good computer and good internet and good equipment. When you buy equipment, buy good equipment. Buy and invest in a good internet and equipment. That's what it says. And you guys know why that's important. I can't tell you how many times I have been on the phone with a student and it literally sounded like, and I'm like, what in the world? Is yeah. Golly. I'm like, can you, can you, uh, I don't know what you got to do. Can you upgrade? I, something's happening here, man. I, it is really bad. It happens a lot. Okay. Buy and invest in good internet and equipment. You will not do very good business without good equipment, period. Okay. Before spending another $40,000 on more courses and stuff, go buy a nice laptop and a headset. It'll make all the difference in the world and how you feel when you go to work too. All right, here's the next one. We've already talked about this a lot, but they set goals. People that are successful set goals and reward themselves first. And that's the part that I really want to focus on. Reward yourself first. Um, if you read the book, and this is a classic, it's called The Richest Man in Babylon by Ogmandino. Og the first thing he talks about is pay yourself first. Pay yourself first. What do you mean, Justin? Before before anything? Yeah, before anything. Before anybody. That's what Ogmandino said. Before anybody gets anybody's money, I get mine. Why? Because it's my business. Now, he's not saying stiff everybody. But he's saying you have to be the first eater of the fruit. Okay. Now, why I'm bringing this up is, is I've noticed that successful people pay themselves. They eat first. Now, here's where we fall prey. Sometimes it's like, well, I'm going to buy my wife of this, or I'm going to buy my kids of this, or I'm going to get them a trampoline, or I'm going to, you know, I'm going to buy my daughter a car or a blah blah okay that's all great and all but what about you i mean you're buying your your daughter a new car but you're still wearing underwear with holes in them do you know how much more successful you'll be when you feel good and you look good i mean we're going to talk about that in a minute here too when you've paid yourself a little bit first okay yeah you've got to reinvest back into you let me ask you Who's the most important person in your business? Somebody tell me. Who's the most important person? It's you. It's Joe. It's Carl. It's Tasha. It's William. Yeah, it's Michael. Who's the second most important person in your business? The customer. The person with the money. <laughs> All right. But you're number one, okay? 
So if you're not paying you, then why do you want to keep showing up? You don't. Would you come work for me if I didn't pay you first? No, you wouldn't. You'd be like, hey, man, that dude's jipping me. I'm, I'm out. Okay, so you got to pay yourself first. Make that reward reward system. If you guys, some a lot of you were in my goals class, the three-day goals challenge, and we talked about rewards first, didn't we? And this is why. If you don't have a reward system for yourself, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because you're human like the rest of us. You are. Okay, here's the next one. All right, number 11. Have a follow-up reminder system. All successful people have a follow-up reminder system. If you don't have one, I've got a three-day challenge coming up the end of March. It's going to be setting up a th uh, setting up a CRM, a free CRM for life. It's free for life. We're going to be setting it up, how to do the pipeline for the leads, the whole nine yards, three days, and you'll have all of this ready to go and active in your life. Okay, but you, you've got to, got to, got to have a follow-up reminder system. If you don't, then you are a, really, you're just a forgetful person. And we all are. We cannot remember it all. Okay. And you know what happens when you forget things and you forget people? They get pissed. Okay. And you lose deals and you lose relationships and you lose connections. Get a follow-up reminder system and use it. Okay. Here's another one. This is number 12. Stop useless chatting and useless busy work. Remember productivity above all every day and everything. But stop chatting and useless busy work. Stop chatting and useless busy work. Yep. You guys know what I mean by that. What's busy work? Somebody give me a good example of busy work. Rearranging my desk, which I do a lot. That's busy work. Mm, you know, nobody's paying you to do busy work. What else is busy work? I'm going to stretch you here. What else is busy work? What about mowing the grass? Is anybody paying you to mow the grass? Okay, then then I guess that's busy work, isn't it? Right? Michael says thinking about it but not doing it, that's busy. Yeah, that's busy. You you know, you can be awful busy doing that. I've got a I've got a relative that does that real, real good. Is we probably all do. <laughs> I got a relative. He'll think about it all the time. He he even laugh about it. He'll sit in that rocking chair and just rock back and forth and think about all that money. I Yep, yep, yep. Busy work. Yep. Stuff that keeps you busy. Why do we like to do busy work? Busy work is an avoidance technique. Busy work is an avoidance technique because we're not practicing what number, uh, what was it? Uh, the do it now style. Okay, here's another one. Be clean, look respectable, and talk respectable. I'm, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but if you talk like a poor person, people will treat you like one. And that's just how it works. If you look like a poor person, if you stink a little, if you got stains on your shirt and you, even if you're on the phone with somebody and you're, you're, you're talking all loose with them. Yeah. They're going to treat you like you're not very respectable. If you want respect, be respectable. It's about that easy. See, the world would tell you if you want respect, you got to demand it. That's not true. That's how you create drama. But if you want to, if you want respect in business, 
then you have to be respectable. Uh Uh-oh, that's tough, but it's true. And look at, look at us. Some of us are a little sloppy. Sometimes I'm sloppy. You guys have seen that a little sloppy sometimes, but if you think I'm sloppy now, just you should have seen me back then. (laughs) <laughs> all right they used to call me kiwi that was my nickname as a younger man kiwi not kiwi the fruit kiwi the boot polish because i needed polish real bad kiwi i was the guy that needed to polish up you know what if you're going to come up in your income you're going to have to polish up a little bit Polish up, maybe a lot. Be very careful about how you speak. How you sound. Well, but I don't feel very, okay, well, let me ask you, is is business a feeling? Mostly business is an act. But So make it respectable. All right, here's the next one. Always return calls and voicemails. This is what successful people do. They always return calls and voicemails. I can tell you back in 2014, what made the difference for me. Remember I told you between 2010 and 2014, I was in depression, self-sabotaging because I'd lost everything that I had in the crash of 2008. Well, the crash was more than just the crash for me. I mean, I went all the way down. I mean, I, I went down personally down. Yeah. I, I violated a lot of these rules between 2010 and 2014. But what made it change for me in 2014 was, as I embraced several of these rules and this was one of them for sure i put some ads on craigslist looking for cash buyers and i swore to myself i will return every call and every voicemail and you know what the rest is history rest is history that's about that simple it's about that simple Throw a line in the water and then return your voicemails and your calls. Now, here, let me say this, because some of you are going to be like, well, I get a call and then I send send them a text. No, no, no. That's not what I said. I said return calls and voicemails. If somebody's texting you, text them back. If someone's emailing you, email them back. If someone's calling you, call them back. The last one, number 16, embrace being a teacher yourself. But Justin, I haven't done any deals. I know you haven't done any deals, but you've learned how to work the lead machine really, really good. Okay. Or you've learned this other thing. There are other people in the coaching club, especially if you're in the coaching club, that really will look up to you if you just offer the slightest bit of assistance. And this will give you a good feeling in your heart and a moral high ground. And not only that, it will reinforce all of those same lessons and values in you. It will create accountability. So, I've got a guy in here who's looking for a body double. He's in the room right now. A body double. Does anybody know what that means? A body double. In today's terminology. A body double is when you do your work on Zoom while on zoom whether you're you're not really talking on zoom but it's it's viewing you while you're making calls to homeowners and that other person is doing the same thing and so there is some camaraderie between the two of you 
that, hey, for the next 30 minutes, we're just going to call sellers together. That's called being a body double. I'm not alone. That's a lot what I mean when I say be a teacher. Be open to teaching and sharing and caring and helping, okay? Does anybody in here want to volunteer to be a body double? All right. I'll let you send me a message privately if you do, because I've got someone else in this room that wants one. Okay, those are the 16 things that I've noticed. We have four minutes left in our hour. Thank you for being here today. I want to talk about homework briefly. Homework is I want you to begin the why. Okay, remember what got you started, what got you interested in real estate, and then I want you to start writing down the why. Is it the ability to work from home or anywhere? The option of working when you want to? Whatever, all those things we talked about. And then st start creating a vision board. You don't have to have anything special. Cut some pictures out of a magazine. Print some things off from the internet and tape them to your wall. I don't care how ugly it is. It's you and it's beautiful and it's coming out. Okay, so start that tonight. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about it a little bit, but when we get started, and I want you to show me an example, maybe if, you, if you're brave enough, show me a little example of your little vision board that you got started. Or maybe, maybe you're adding two because you already have one. And then we're going to talk about time management tomorrow because this is a big, big topic for, for us as self-employed or self-managing real estate people, okay? Time management. We're going to talk about time management. How do we organize our lives? Where we, How do we set up our work schedule where it enhances our lives? Okay, we're going to talk about that for an hour. Okay, any questions right now before we part ways today? Thanks for being here, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Any questions before we go? Anything you want to share? Any statements you want to make? Anybody want to throw stones at me? Go ahead. Absolutely not. <laughs> okay. All right, Christina. Thank you. God bless you. Hey, I love you, William, Michael, Carl, Joe. Tasha, Christina, Ty, Lee, Alec, Kevin. I'll be sending a replay link out to your email here shortly. Okay, sometime this afternoon. And then I'll see you again tomorrow. Okay, everybody. Time management tomorrow. Don't miss it because I'm going to show you some, I'm going to give you some tools that I use to help me. Okay, we'll talk then. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.